So this Kitab Lamiya, uh, in which we're going to take today, bi-idhnillah al kareem after we've speak, spoken about the biography of the uh, author, Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, this book, um, there isn't um, a clear-cut, clear-cut uh, evidence to say that Ibn Taymiyyah authored this book. But there are three things that indicate, inshallah ta'ala, that can be used to say that Ibn Taymiyyah authored this book. Number one is, this book has become famous. Ishtahara li Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. This book became famous and known that it's Ibn Taymiyyah's book. Um, and there, it hasn't been ascribed to anybody other than Ibn Taymiyyah. A lot of the times, scholars, they ascribe one book to a person and others, they ascribe it to another person. But this book, it's only been ascribed to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and it's become well known for that. The second thing that indicates that uh, or points uh, this book towards Ibn Taymiyyah is that muhtawayatu hadha al manduma what this book consists of. Uh, the points that this book deals with are really things that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala anyone who has looked into his works and his books could say that um, that these are what he talks about. Um, and inshallah ta'ala, some of them we're going to see inshallah ta'ala as the book comes, uh, as we go into the book bi-idhnillah al -Kareem. The third thing that indicates that this book is written by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is, uh, some of the scholars have actually said that it's ibn Taymiyyah's book. Jazama ba'du ahli al-ilm Kal uh, Imam Al-Alusi rahimahullah Some of the scholars they said that this book is written by Ibn Taymiyyah and they ascribe the book to him such as Al Imam Al-Alusi rahimahullah in his book Jala'ul Aynayn bi Muhakamat al um, and that book Al Imam Al-Alusi rahimahullah the Alim of Baghdad Iraq Al Imam Al-Alusi rahimahullah that book of his where he basically he talks about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Hajar al-Haytami, not Haythami, but Ibn Hajar al-Haytami, sahib uh, fatawa al-Hadithiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah and what he said about Ibn Taymiyyah, he talks about it in that book, Jala'u al-Aynayn bi muhakamati al ahmadayn and he ascribes this book to, he ascribes this book to Shaykh al-Islam uh, ibn Taymiyyah. Um, this book, a lot of scholars have explained it. Uh, from the scholars who've explained it is, uh, and you could say that it's the best explanation, is the explanation of Ahmed uh, ibn Abdullahi al-Mardawi. Uh, Sorry, Ahmed ibn Abdullahi al-Mardawi, rahimahullah, al-Hanbali. Uh, Ahmed ibn Abdullahi al-Mardawi, al-Hanbali. In his book, Al-Ali, Al-Bahiyya, Sharh al Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, uh, which is matbu' mutadawal. It is authored and it is, is published and people have it. Um, but Ahmed ibn Abdullah al-Mardawi, Ahmed ibn Abdullah al-Mardawi al-Hanbali, he kind of doesn't clearly ascribe the book to Ibn Taymiyyah. He rather says that this book, Mansubat um, ila Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, which is ascribed to Shaykh al-Islam uh, ibn Taymiyyah. So, Adam al jazm not to say that this book, or to say with conviction that this book is the book of Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, not many scholars have done that. And some scholars, they, they uh, kind of, they didn't give it, but they say this book is subscribed to Ibn uh, Taymiyyah. Um, the scholars who said that this book is not written by Ibn Taymiyyah and questioned the book, the arguments that they brought forward was uh, that Ibn Taymiyyah used one of the one of the lines of this book in his Majmu' al-Fatawa. He used one of the lines in this book in his Majmu' al-Fatawa. And the line that we're going to come to, inshaAllah, قُبْحًا لِمَنْ نَبَذَ الْقُرْآنَ وَرَآهُ وَإِذَا اسْتَدَلَّ يَقُولُ قَالَ الْأَخْطَلُ That line of poetry, Ibn Taymiyyah used it in his uh, Majmu' al-Fatawa. And he said, when he brought that line of poetry, he said, um, 
وَقَدْ أَنْشَدَ الْمُنْشِدُ مِنْهُمْ And the poet who, gave, who done this line of poetry said, he said, وَقَدْ أَنْشَدَ الْمُنْشِدُ Like the one who read this poetry said, as though it wasn't him. But the scholars replied back to, by saying that it could happen, and it's possible, sometimes an author may say that about his own poetry. And anyone who reads books would realize that scholars do do that. Their own work, they say, قَالَ الْمُؤَلِّفُ The author said, when it's his own book, when he's explaining his own book. Or he will say, وَلِلَّهِ دَرْءُ الْقَائِلِ May Allah make dua for the person who said this, when it's his own words. So this is not something that uh, goes against it. But there is one thing uh, that could point towards this book, if not being Ibn Taymiyyah. That is, if um, this is... Uh, if this goes through, um, which is one of the lines of poetry um, where it says, وَأَقُولُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ آيَاتُهُ فَهُوَ الْكَرِيمُ الْمُنْزَلُ If we say آيَاتُهُ فَهُوَ الْقَدِيمُ الْمُنْزَلُ and, and the Qadim is the correct version, if we say that, and it comes out that the word Qadim is the correct manuscript and it turns out to be that's the correct version, then this book cannot be ascribed to Ibn Taymiyyah. Because Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah is known to be against the word Al-Qadim, the usage of the word Al-Qadim. For the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his stance is very clear. Um, but it seems like that the manuscripts or, or the copies that have come, that it says, Ayatu fawal karimul munzalu, that the word karim is what is used. So inshallah ta'ala, Without any further uh, ado, inshallah ta'ala we will go into the book بإذن الله الكريم by Shaykh Al-Islam Taymiyyah. Uh, the author, he started his book by saying يا سائلي عن مذهبي وعقيدتي رزق الهدى من للهداية يسأل The author, he started his book by saying يا سائلي O oh, you who is asking me عن مذهبي my مذهب وَعَقِيدَتِي and asking me about my aqeedah. So the first shatr, the first part of the first sentence, the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, it seems like normally as his other works are, that this book is a reply to a questioner who asked him. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah is replying to the question. So this individual, what did he ask him about the Shaykh's madhab and his aqeedah? That he here, the madhab is not meant by the school of thought. But rather it is what? His aqeedah. And when we spoke about the matter of al-atf al ala al-khasi and, and, and al-atf al-khasi ala al-am, it falls under that chapter. Which is that sometimes you can ascribe or you can use atf, you can use the wow between two things which are the same. Or one falls under the other. Okay, so Ya Sa'ili, the one who is asking me, and Madhabi, my Madhab, meaning the Madhab which I am upon, the methodology which I have treaded on. And what's the methodology that we're upon? Our Madhab is what? Itiba'ul Kitabi was Sunnah ala Fahmi Salaf al Ummah. Hada Hada Madhabuna. Our Madhab is what? The Madhab that we're upon is what? Al Kitabu, the Book of Allah. And the Sunnah of the Messenger, alayhi salatu was salam. And understanding the kitab and the sunnah based on whose understanding? Our own? No. Based on the understanding of the sahabas, the pious predecessors. How did they understand this verse? What did they extract from this verse? So we don't introduce anything new. We don't come with our own, our own interpretation of the religion. No. وَعَقِيدَةِ no. Aqidah comes from the linguistic word aqd. وَهُوَ رَبْطُ الشَّيْءِ the word aqidah comes from the word aqd. Aqd is to tie something. Rabtu shay is to tie something. And that is what aqidah is, is that you tighten this thought in your mind. You believe it with, un with what? Unwavering conviction. You believe it with what? With unwavering conviction, it's, it is fully rooted in your heart. Okay? So the O you who is asking me, رزق الهدى من للهداية يسألو so the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he's making dua for the one who asked. The one who asked he, this question, he's making dua for him. 
and he's making dua for him that Allah gives him guidance. Because anyone who asks a question like this, which is a matter pertaining to aqeedah, a matter pertaining to the madhab in your matters of aqaid, Shaykh, this dua is definitely something you ask for them. Naam. So the person who's asking this question is one of two people who asked the Shaykh this question. Number one, it is either a person. Um, he's either a person who is testing the Shaykh. He's actually testing the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala. Um, or he is a person who is what? He is a person who is actually asking, uh, who wants to know the answer to this, who really is looking for guidance. You see, that is what the person who's asking may be. And the way that the Sheikh sees this person, it seems like he sees them in a what? He sees them in a form of respect. And that he respects the individual. So it seems like a person who's asking out of what? Out of a way of wanting to know. And that he's looking for guidance through it. Now what we need to also understand is that the scholars, they used to author their book based on one of two situations. That's one of two situations is why a, a scholar would author a book. Number one, the reason why he would author a book is because an individual comes up to him and says to him, Ya Shaykh, this mas'ala hayyaratni, it has confused me. I need somebody to explain this matter for me. Explain it to me. And so the Shaykh, what he does is, he expands, he elaborates, and he speaks about the matter in details. And that is many of the books of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. It was a sa'il, a question I asked the Shaykh. The second is the situation that is prevalent at that time, or what is taking place, the author looks at it and he realizes that he should speak about it and author a, a, a book in this regard. And that is also some of the things that Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah authored his books regarding. So he said, Ya Sa'ili an madhabi, the one who is asking me about my madhab and my aqidah, ruzik al huda, may Allah give you guidance. Man lil hidayat yas'alu, the one who is asking about guidance. So the man was asking to be guided. Here the Shaykh mentions two types of guidance. He is ruzik al huda, man lil hidayat yas'alu. And guidance is of those two types. The person he's looking through guidance by asking who? The Shaykh. And brothers and listeners who are listening, sisters, you really have to understand that our relationship with the ulama is what? Our relationship with the ulama is because we don't have no prophet with us today. And no prophet will be set down. Like the previous nations, every time a prophet died, another prophet will come. A prophet died, another prophet will come. A prophet died, another prophet will come. This ummah after Muhammad, is there any prophet after it? We don't have it. So who's taking the position of the Prophet sallallahu ulama. It is the scholars. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-ulama warathatul anbiya. Wa inna al-anbiya lam yuwarrithu dirhaman wala dinara. Wa inna ma warrathul ilm. Faman akhadahu, akhadahu bi hadhin wafir. The scholars, they've inherited something from the prophets. And what they've inherited from them is what? This knowledge. So because we won't see no prophet right now, and for us to understand what the prophet said, what he meant by what he said, it is the, prophet, it is the ulama who explained that to us. So we go to them when matters are unclear to us, and we ask them, and we don't disconnect ourselves from who? The ulama and the people of knowledge. Because criticizing and critiquing the scholars is a methodology taken by who? The Ahlul Bida'i wa Dalal, the people of misguidance. The people of what? Misguidance. Walidalika go to Kitab al Itisam by Imam Shatib Rahimullah. When he talks about the chapter of Alamat Ahlul Bida'a. Pay attention. Al Itisam by Imam Ash Shatib Abis Aq Ash Shatib Rahimullah. In his book, Al Itisam. He mentions in the chapter when he talks about the Alamat, the signs of the people of innovation. What does he talk about? He brings a statement from Ismail ibn Ulayya. Ismail ibn Ulayya. He said, Haddathani al-Yasa. Yasa told me. Who's saying this? 
Ismail ibn Ulayah. He said, Hadathani li Yasa. Yasa told me that Wasil ibn Ata. Who is Wasil ibn Ata? Wasil ibn Ata is the student of Hassan al Basri who became an innovator later and he was the leader of the deviated sect Al Mu'tazila. They ascribe back to who? Wasil ibn Ata. So Al Imam Abu Haq al Shatibi said that Ismail ibn Ulayah said, Hadathan al Yasa, that Am Wasil ibn Ata said, he said, Hadatha Amr ibn Ubaid. Amr ibn Ubaid is who? Amr ibn Ubaid is a Mu'tazili. He's, he's with Awasil ibn Ata. Pay attention to this khubth and this filth that's going to come out of the mouth of this deviated individual. Ubaidul and Amr ibn Ubaid. What did he say? He said, Ma ilmu. What is the knowledge of who? Hassan al Basri wa ibn Sirin. What is the knowledge of Hassan al Basri? That's his own sheikh. And Ibn Sirin, Muhammad ibn Sirin. What's their knowledge? Except what? What's the knowledge of Hassan al Basri? And Muhammad ibn Sirin, in which you hear when they talk, they say, and the kind of words that come out of their mouth, what is it like? He said, Illa khirqatu haydin mulqat. It is like the cloth of a woman, in which she, a pad a woman wears when she's on her menstruation, and when she finishes with it, and the time she wants to wear another one, she throws it. The knowledge of Hassan al Basri and Muhammad ibn Sirin is like that. So, what does this teach us? Criticizing, slandering the scholars is It's a path which is misguidance. It's a path which was what? Uh, which is misguidance. And Walidalika Abu Hatim al Razi, what did he say? Alama to Ahlil Bida al Waqi'a to Fi Ahlil Athar. I have to memorize that statement. Alama to Ahlil Bida. The sign in which you know a person of innovation is what? Al Waqi'a. They fall in criticizing, slandering more like the people of the text. They will slander a alim. So they won't refer back to the scholars. You hear, the, you hear them say that these scholars are scholars of dollars. Don't refer back to the scholars. If you want to take knowledge from them, take from them tahara, take from them ahkam salah, take from them ahkam zakat, take from them ahkam al take from them ahkam rahan, and all of these things. Like ahkam al jihad, ahkam al imara, and matters. But no, don't take from them. Because they are, they have dhagd. They have pressure from the government. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. Tashabahat qulubuhum. Their statement and the statements of the, the previous innovators have become the same. So stay away from that. And don't open your tongue with the people of knowledge. Refer back to them. Ask them questions. If there is a matter which you don't know, follow the statement of Allah. Fas'alu ahl al-dhikri in kutum la ta'alamun. If you don't know a matter, take it back to who? The ulama. Now what I want you to all understand, inshaAllah ta'ala is, when Allah said in this ayah, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Ask the, ask the people of knowledge if there is a matter which you don't know. This ayah is ayah muhkama. It's an ayah which is clear cut. Which until the day of judgment has to be implemented. Will Allah wa ta'ala say to us, if you don't know a matter, take it back to the scholars when there is no scholars. Will Allah say that to us? Will Allah send us back to, a, uh, 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 to the scholars and go back to them when they don't exist? No. They have to exist in order for us to implement the ayah. So, there are ulama and scholars and people of knowledge. وَلِذَلِكَ the messenger said, لَا تَزَالُوا طَائِفَةً مِنْ أُمَّةِ ظَاهِرِينَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ مَنْ خَذَلَهُمْ وَلَا مَنْ خَالَفَهُمْ حَتَّى يَأْتِي أَمُرُ اللَّهِ وَهُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ There's always a group who stand on the haqq. They're always consistent. They are always going to be upon it. So there's always going to be a people of guided people. The Ummah are not all upon misguidance. Abadan. Very good. So going back to the scholars, using the scholars as your reference point, asking them matters which have ishkal accord and you don't understand. Respecting the ulama after you take a knowledge from them. And knowing that the flesh of the scholars is what? Poisonous. So the flesh of the scholars, 
um, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala made it poisonous. Why not? They are the God, God, they are the guardians of this earth the way that the angels are the guardians of the sky and the heavens. They guard this earth from any shubuhat and any shukuk and shahawat that is put forward about Allah's religion. They are hurras. Hurras dunya, it's them. As Sufyan Thawri said, that the hurras of this dunya are the ulama. Kama anna al-malaika hurras sama The same way that the angels are the guardians, the guardians, the guardians. Mm -hmm. who look after the heavens and make sure that nobody can just come into places. The earth, the ulama are like that for it. So it's really important that we give respect to those who Allah Taala has given them uh, appraisal. And Allah Taala has put their status up. Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa wal malaika wa ulul ilmi qa'iman bil qist. Allah Taala he mentions his name and the name of the angels next to the ulama and that is a tazkiyah tazkiyah Allah praise them subhanahu wa ta'ala ya ummat al-islam oh muslims don't belittle those people and don't open your tongues towards them give them their respect where it is but you always you always have to remember that there there is always al ifrat and a tafrid there's extreme both ang sides. There are people who take the ulama as what? That they are infallible. They make the ulama taqdeesul ulama. They take the ulama above the text, the kitab and the sunnah. And there are another group of people who don't care about the ulama. Who are they? How am I? Why do I have to take from them? I just want Allah and His Messenger. And He isn't even what? He isn't even a person who can write His name in the Arabic language. And he wants to open his tongue. He wants to critique the ulama. He wants to say, I disagree and I agree. Who are you? Man anta li tukhalif al ulama. Who are you to disagree with the ulama? Al Imam, al Allama, al Muallimi, al Yamani, the Habi al Asr, Abdurrahman ibn Yahya, al Muallimi, Sahibu Kitab, al Tankil, bima fi ta'ni bil kawthariyu min al Abatil, which is a book again that a student of knowledge should look into, read. Um, the books of uh, Mu'allimi is a uh, ujuba. It's an ujuba. It's a fascinating. Ala kulli had, ala kulli hal, Muhammad Zahid al Kawthari, who insulted 300 individuals from the Sahabas, Anas ibn Malik, he insulted him. You see, he insulted Imam Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Sufyan al Thawri, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, Al Awza'i, Ma'amar ibn Rashid, A'imma Kibar. Why all of that? Because of his. Uh, his ghulu, his extreme towards who? Towards who? Abu Hanifa. Muhammad Zahid al Kawthari. And he also belittles and, and uh, insults uh, Khatib al Baghdadi, uh, Yaqub ibn Abi Shayba, Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba, all of them. So, Abdurrahman Yahya al Muallimi in his book, Al Tankil, Bima fi Ta'ni bil Kawthari min al Abatil, he said something. He said to him in reply, he said, من أوسع أودية الباطلة الغلو في الأفاضل If you want to know a value of destruction, uh, if you want to see a value of destruction, which is in reality the first problem that this ummah suffered from, which was what? الغلو في الأفاضل is to go extreme in the righteous people. Nabiullah Nuh the five individuals وقالوا لا تذرن وقالوا لا تذرن آلهتكم ولا تذرن ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوق ونص ونصرا وقالوا لا تذرن آلهتكم ولا تذرن ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوق ونصرا they were what they were what they were five righteous men as عبد الله بن عباس سنة صحيح البخاري they were what رجال صالحون five righteous men but what did they um then people do after they died they made pictures of them and they worshipped him. So this is what? Al-Ghuloof al-Salihin, to go extreme in the righteous people. Even our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a woman, she was praising the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and look what she said while she was with the messenger. She said, Inna fina nabiyun, amongst us is a prophet, ya'lamu ma fil ghad, he knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And then the messenger, what did he say to her? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taquli, don't say what you just said. 
ولكن قولي ما كنت تقولين don't say what you said but say what you were saying before all the other praises and the things that you were saying say that but don't say this one and then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said لا يستحو, لا يست, لا, don't let shaitan overcome you don't let what? shaitan overcome you in the praises that you praise imagine if the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to see the statement of al-Busiri وَإِنَّ مِنْ جُودِكَ الدُّنْيَا وَضَرَّتَهَا وَمِنْ عُلُومِكَ عِلْمُ اللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمِ If he was to see that statement, what would the Prophet say والسلام, Which these misguided individuals read in their what? They read it in the celebration of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم's birthday, the Burda of Busiri. The Prophet was to see that what would he have said? The Prophet said, لَا تَطْرُونِ كَمَا أَطْرَتِ النَّصَارَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ Don't go extreme on me like the Christians went extreme on who? Isa ibn Maryam. Don't go extreme on me like that. So praising the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you'll, you'll see some people say to you, praising the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can never go too extreme on it. Because you will never be able to what? Praise him enough, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. It's a lie. Isn't he the one who's stopping it over here? Is he not the one telling this woman not to do it? Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Is he not the one that's telling you not to go overboard with me? Huh? Is it not the Christians? لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَةً لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا Are they the ones who said that Allah is one of three? وَمَا مِنْ إِلَهٍ إِلَّا إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْتَهُ عَمَّا يَقُولُونَ لَيَمَسَّنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ So, why did the Christians, went, why did the Christians go uh, misguided? Or why did they become misguided and deviated from the right path? They went extreme on Nabi Isa ibn Maryam. Then, brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is, the righteous people, they should be given their status that Allah gave them. And we shouldn't do al-ghulub, al-ifrat, and al-tafrit. We shouldn't go extreme, and we shouldn't go less. And place them, and nanzil al-nasa manazilahum. That we place everyone in their right place. And that we don't go extreme towards the people. So the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, رُزِقَ الْهُدَى مَنْ لِلْهِدَايَةِ يَسْأَلُ So what does guidance mean? Or oh, how many types of guidance are there? The guidance are two types. The first type of guidance is the guidance which Allah negated from us as His creation. No one is able to do this type of guidance. It's a guidance which is specific for Allah. And it's the one Allah negated in the Quran from the Prophet. What did He say to him? إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ Muhammad, you cannot guide whoever you want. But Allah guides whoever He wills. So that ayah, what, did it, what, did it teach us? what does it tell us? That there's a guidance which the Prophet can't come with. And there's a guidance with which no one after the Prophet can come with. If he can't come with it, then no one else can. That guidance is called Al-Hidayatul Tawfiq. Hidayatul Tawfiq. What does that mean? It means to place the haq in the people's hearts. We can't do that. It's only what Allah wa Taala is able to do. Hidayatul hidayatu Tawfiq. Hidayatul at tawfiq There's another type of guidance which is called Hidayatul Dalalat wal Irshad. And that is the Hidayatul Dalalat wal Irshad, which is the guidance of showing the people the straight path. Saying, This is the path of Allah. تتقون, to show the straight path, to say this is what Allah legislated, to say this is what Allah prohibited, to say this is what pleases Allah, to say this is what Allah loves, etc. You see, that type of showing the path, guiding the people on showing them the path, that is what the Prophet can do and anyone after the Prophet can do that from the ulama, from the people of knowledge. From the students of knowledge, they can do that, they can guide to the path. That guidance that we affirm for them is what? Huh? It's to show the path. And Allah affirmed that for the Messenger. He said, وَكَذَلِكَ أُوحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانُ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى صَلَاةِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ So Allah affirmed the straight path for him here. You guide on Muhammad to the straight path. So what, what path has he been? Uh, affirmed for him or what path is he be, or what guidance can he give the guidance here is to, sh to show the people the straight path so the ulama they guide you by telling you where the path of Allah but which ulama the ulama whose aqidah is sound and their madhab is what 
as I said before, al kitabu was sunnah bi fahm salaf al ummah. They take from the kitab, they take from the sunnah, and they are upon the what? Fahm salaf al ummah, the understanding of the pious predecessors and what they unanimously agreed upon. Naam. Then the Sheikh says after that, one after that line, Isma' listen. Kalam muhaqqiqin fi dinihi. Listen. Brothers, listening is a means to understand. And when a people do not listen to the ulama, and they don't listen to the people of knowledge, what happens to them? They regret it the day of judgment. As Allah said in the Quran, anyone who doesn't listen to the haqq when it's been told to him, and the evidences are being explained to him, and he chooses not to listen, he's going to regret it the day of judgment. Allah says, وَقَالُوا وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُوا أَوْ نَعْقِلْ مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ فَاعْتَرَفُوا بِذَنْبِهِمْ فَسُحْقًا لِأَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ They will say the day of judgment, وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ If only we listened, and we opened our ears, and we took the haqq that we were told, we would not have been from what? From the people of the hellfire. 